Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we're gonna be breaking down the newly released body cam footage from the officer at the Trump assassination from a police officer's perspective. I'm Kyle Schoberg, that's Mark Redledge. We're your hosts and this is the Shots Fired Podcast. So we're gonna watch the body cam footage of the officer when they're initially notified that there was somebody on the roof. It kicks on just before and we can see the officers walking up to like an alcove and then initially the one officer is signaling to the other, I'm gonna hoist you up. And we talked about this in the, tr in the prior video of how the training actually works for that. So this officer goes up, stands on, a, on the officer's arms and he's lifted up and you could see him, he does not have his gun out and he's looking or planning on looking on the roof or getting on the roof. His hands come up, you could see the body cam actually shows the portion of the top. He's crawling up, he's almost all the way on the rooftop. It looks like his waist is almost at the point of the top of it. And then something happens, which we're presuming the suspect turned towards him and he immediately dropped to the ground as fast as he could. Like, like something happened where maybe something was pointed at him or, or he recognized or was startled. Yeah, so, you know, one thing I wanted to pick that I picked up on was these officers are clearly uh, were designated to be in charge of this parking lot. I can't tell how many cops are in this parking lot. There's at least a minimum three or four that I see. But what it looks like to me is when they got notified that there was somebody on the roof, I think they clearly run to the back of that building. And then in the other videos that, that were shown early on of this whole thing, people were saying, he's got a gun, he's got a gun. I clearly don't think that these officers heard that. Yeah, I don't think so. Because if you watch the officer's demeanor that's actually hoisting the other officer up on the roof, he, he kind of has a smile on his face and it kind of looks like they're joking or maybe laughing about the fact that he's got to hoist him up and he's showing him how to do it. Uh, well, I think when you say that is it's a great example because we talk about planning and why it's so important. They're getting reports that somebody's on the roof and he's going to be hoisted up. So if you're going to be hoisted up, you need to have a plan and that plan should be I'm going to verify that someone is or is not on that roof. And if I'm getting hoisted up, you better be in the mindset that you are going to encounter someone. You are going to see someone and you need to have a plan of what to do. Yeah, you don't, like that's what, that's what my thought was. It was almost like the, it, it, it kind of looks like as if they just didn't plan to see anybody or, yeah. or weren't quite even thinking about if they saw somebody, what would they do next? That's the, all, that's the impression that I got as well. It's like, what, what was your plan? getting hoisted up there after people told you somebody was up there, you should, you should be expecting to see somebody. Yeah. And we talk often about mentally preparing for stressful situations. And in here, that officer encountered that suspect. We don't know if he pointed a gun or not. It's, it's not clear in anything that we've seen, but nonetheless, there was something that scared him enough where he threw himself to the ground to protect himself. And then he ran for cover, which makes sense because you're kind of stuck in a weird alcove. You've got to get out of there because that suspect knows exactly where you are. You have to move a position for advantage. But then watch what he does. He just runs out in the middle of the parking lot, past his patrol car, and then out in an open field. Yeah. Kyle, so talk about well, talk about your mindset and why that happens. Yeah, let, let's hit on that. So it's it's tough to watch. I mean, it's tough to watch, right? And people look at that and they can attack this guy all, all day long. And, and that's that's the easy thing to do. Uh, what people aren't taking into account is the mental preparedness of something like that, right? Like your OODA loop. We, we talk about that all the time. And what happened to this guy, the moment that guy turned around or he saw that guy with that rifle, everything just dumped into that guy's stress, adrenaline. I, I mean, it was real to him at that point. And that's why you see him running into this, I guess, open uh, parking lot or this grassy area. He's not trying to get back to his car. He's not trying to get cover. We can't tell if he's getting on the radio because there's no audio. I presume that he probably is, but he's doing this because his brain has taken over at this point. I mean, he's in like hypervigilant mode and he's doing something he probably ordinarily would not have done. And I bet you if you were to ask him and run that scenario by him in a stale environment, if, if he encountered somebody with a gun on top of a roof, what would he do? He wouldn't say, well, I would run out in the middle of the parking lot, run in a circle yeah. and, you know, not know what to do. Like, he's not going to say that. And, and that's, that's the conversation we always have is like, if you're not training your brain to be able to manage a high dump load of stress like that, these are the actions that you're going to do. And in law enforcement, you don't get the opportunity to do that. You're supposed to be able to react to something like this quickly uh, identify what it is that you're dealing with and then start making an appropriate decisions on how to deal with the situation. And, and in this case, you're at a presidential rally with a former president with a guy with a rifle on a roof. That's not good. No. So let's keep, keep going on this. So he ends up 
running out in the field, kind of standing around. We don't know if he's communicating on the radio or not because there is no audio. But he makes his way back to his patrol car. He tries to open the back door, can't get in, which it's locked, so he has to unlock it. And then what I found interesting is he opens the back door and his rifle bag is sitting there just laying on the back seat. It's not secure in a, in a rifle rack or anything. And then watch what happens when he tries to pull the rifle out. He struggles with it. Just a basic movements. Uh, fine motor skills are completely out the door at this point. And then he's trying to grab the magazines and he's he's dropping them. He's like manipulating. He's almost like looking and just like, nope, I, this isn't going to work and moves it and then grabs another one. Looks like he seats it, but maybe it doesn't seat all the way. Somewhat racks it. It doesn't seem like it charges. And then I don't he know. drops yeah. it. It just, it is complete. He's a to in a total OODA loop right now. And you can, once the audio kicks on and you can hear his breathing is incredibly increased. It is majorly labored right now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, he goes to grab the rifle and it's like he, he's, his hands are shaking. And look, we, we've been in situations where it's, it's life or death, right? We've, we've been in shootings ourselves. We've been in encounters where people have guns, fired guns at us. Like it's a terrifying situation to be in uh, because, I mean, the reality is, is no, none of us want to be in that situation, right? And, but that is, this is a unique career where that's, that's kind of the nature of the game. And so, you know, that's why you see his hands shaking. You talked about fine motor skills. I mean, that stuff goes out the window if you can't, mm -hmm. if you can't manage that. Right. And so, you know, they talk about, you know, doing some type of like endurance or, or, or a workout or something to get your heart rate up, you know, as much as you can throughout the week. Uh, and the reason for that is so that when you get these massive um, spikes of adrenaline, you can reduce those adrenaline spikes a lot quicker if you are physically in shape uh, rather than, rather than not. So, um, that's why we see this officer behaving that with the way that he's behaving. I mean, he clearly cannot manipulate that firearm. I don't know if that thing wouldn't rack around. I can't tell. Um, I didn't, I didn't ever, I'd never saw a round eject yeah, out of there. I didn't either. So, you know, but it's also not very uncommon for cops to, when you're that stressed out, trying to, trying to do something and you can't immediately get it done. And so you ditch whatever you have because you think that that's the problem mm -hmm. when really you're the problem. And then you just quickly move on to something else. So he ends up standing behind his patrol car. There's a lot of different radio traffic going on, but in the background, you can see additional officers and recognize that this person, the suspect has an elevated position. So in order to see him, you're going to have to get back so you can decrease your angle, but look in the video, you can see things. And this is where it's all about training and critical thinking, thinking outside the box. You have to, and, there's a, a conics box further in the background. There's, there's a building further away that you can get to and get up on top of that to get a, a higher point where you can see this person. And, and they're not doing that. They're just kind of just standing out in the middle of the parking lot. And it's, well, they're trying to figure out what to do at this point. I, yeah. I, I think everybody is thrown for a loop at this point. Nobody's thinking outside the box. You already pointed out there's obviously areas where these guys could have got to a higher elevation. Uh, we even brought it up to pulling a patrol car up to the edge of that building. That roof was not that high. I think they could have got up on the roof of a patrol car to gain access onto the onto that roof. The bottom line is this: a problem, a major problem, has been been presented to the to these officers. They need to figure out how to resolve this problem, like immediately. You've been involved in presidential campaigns and and stuff doing dignitary protection. I, I personally have not, but. I could imagine that if a problem like that presented itself in the, in the area that I'm in charge of doing security, would it be, un I mean, would it be uncommon or, or common that, you know, the, f the people that are either within the inner perimeter secret service or whoever, like they probably don't have comms with these guys. I mean, I know they're putting out the radio traffic, which is appropriate, but it kind of seemed to me like maybe they were waiting for somebody else to fix the problem. When, when to me, I'm like, no, you're there. You need to fix the problem. Well, yeah, and they're the first two officers there. So we talk about SIPA, contain, identify, plan, and act. Containment, well, he's on the room, on the roof. Identify, well, what is the problem? We have someone on the roof. Yeah. Now let's plan to address that. And that there was no plan, and I, I think that's where it kind of went downhill right away because they, they were not in the mindset. This is all a result of not having the correct mindset. But if you're going to look for somebody on the roof, you've got to have a plan. Communicate with other people and know what you're going to do. Yeah, I... I agree. I, I think there was just a total 
breakdown and lack of planning on this whole thing. And it looks to me like there's several different agencies working with each other in this. It looks like you got the state, local state cops, you got the local township cops and, uh, you know, I don't know how it works there, but you know, when you have a hodgepodge of officers working together on something and a, and some, a critical incident happens, I mean, that that's where you, you should be training with each other prior t- to this so that when you all know what each other's response is, is going to be and hopefully have the ability to communicate with each other. Like that's, that's going to be priority. But like, you know, we talked about drones and, and things like that. You know, they, it didn't look like they had them there or they wasn't a part of their planning. Um, but that's something to think about. Like you're in charge of a security area that's got buildings. Like you can't, unless you're on that physically on that roof, how are you going to cover that area? And then the other question is that's going to, that's been posed is why weren't they on the roof? Why, why was there not a sniper or somebody on that roof? We don't have the answers. Uh, I don't know if the answer is they didn't have the personnel. Uh, they felt like they could cover that building without anybody getting up there which obviously wasn't the case. Well, the whole parking lot's empty. So, so it makes me think that maybe they've already checked that area and then they had a perimeter around that. So they didn't yeah, need somebody like they on felt the roof. Like they felt like it was, they were confident that yeah. that building was locked down and like the, and their heads are like, well, nobody's going to get on this roof anyways without us seeing them. And but clearly that didn't happen. But let's talk about the time frame. So they were notified that someone's on the roof. It's 6.10 p.m. In 43 seconds, the officers hoist it up. He ducks, he runs, and at 6.11.34 is when Trump is shot. So it's about 48 seconds from when that officer peeked over the top of that, came back down, and was shot. Yeah. So that officer, uh, Trump was shot before he even made it back to his patrol car. Yeah. And then you can hear in the radio traffic that someone's been shot. But this is when the body cam gets even more interesting, is once this officer gets back up, and you can see in the view and listen to what he's saying, because he's still stuck in an OODA loop. He's standing behind people, trying to communicate some, this officer is the only one that has seen the suspect at this point for those officers on the ground that we could presume with the radio traffic. Yeah. And he's trying to describe where this person is at while you have multiple SWAT team officers standing and trying to get on a roof. Ends up being not the correct roof. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe they want distance. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting listening to it. And then you can see in the body cam that he is, that these officers, one of them is actually constantly yelling, get me a ladder, get me a hard ladder. And it's no one is really taking control. And, and if you were trained as a team, you'd have a plan and there's no plan. And it seemed like everyone was just completely OODA looped and they're all trying to get on the roof, all trying to get on the roof on this. And it's interesting watching that. Yeah, we talked about like, why does, you know, why did everybody need to try to get on the roof? And, and I think that just comes with the state of panic that was going on. I, you know, we, we had mentioned before recording, like, if something like that happens, you know, somebody has to step up and take charge. There's got to be discipline. Like you can't have everybody trying to accomplish the same mission because there's a much bigger mission to be accomplished now. I mean, you have, you've got chaos happening now. You've got thousands of people running around. You don't know if this guy is by himself. Somebody needs to start dictating like what, what actions to take next. And not everybody can be uh, in the fire, I guess. That's kind of what I, I feel like I see here is like everyone's just trying to um, obtain the same goal, which was to get up on that roof. And yeah, taking and that like 30,000, you know, 30,000 step view of, of taking a step back and kind of assessing the situation as a whole and then trying to figure out like, all right, this is happening. These pe- personnel are doing this. We need to start planning and dictating like. But again, like that just that just comes down to planning. Like that's pre planning something, you know? Well, in training and knowing what to do. So you could see in the the body cam right now, all these officers are trying, they're all standing around and it looks like they're all trying to figure out how to lift these guys up onto the roof. Well, I think two or three are already on the roof at this point. That stuff needs to be communicated. And if you are, if you're in that group, someone needs to take charge And, and here's how you lift someone up on a roof. Two people need to take a seated position, like you're almost sitting in a chair with no chair with your back to the wall. The officer, just two designated people do that, sit next to each other. And then the officer that's going to climb up, climbs up, puts a foot on your knee, stands up, puts another foot on your shoulder, grabs the top and climbs up. You can get multiple people up super fast that way if you just designate two people, take that seated position and go, go. And here, no one's taking control and it's, and it's a gaggle of trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, to, to piggyback off of that, I, I, what you're talking about, I mean, that's all stuff that should be being trained at like your trainings, right? SWAT training and stuff like that. And 
and, and albeit that sounds kind of like, cause I mean, why well, that's the first I've ever even heard that, right? You were on a full-time SWAT team. So it, so it sounds like obviously you guys as a team train that. Those it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for those guys to climb on the roof because you have a lot of gear. It is a lot but of that's gear. The pro, that's, the, that's the process of climbing on a roof. Yeah, but that, so my point was going to be is like, those are the little things that you should be training at, at training, right? It's not always just about shooting and, you know, target acquisition and all that. Like those are the small things that really matter when big things happen. Uh, and being able to go back and be like, yeah, we successfully did that because we trained that. You know, yeah. literally sitting down on the ground and, and having guys stand on you, you know, at training, like nobody think everyone always, I think, skips over the minor things. Well, this and is the minor. minor things are always the big things. This is all, all you're doing is getting multiple officers on a rooftop. Like, and it's not a high roof. It's no, not complicated. It's not at all. It, and that just shows the challenge of, in where their mindsets were. And then furthering with, with the body cam that we're watching, they already said the, uh, the suspect is basically down. So there is no threat at this point. There's officers up on the roof. And then the off the body cam that we're watching, it seems like he's still OODA looped. And then he just makes a decision to run up mm -hmm. with a bunch of SWAT team members and then says, hey, you've already lifted me up once. Get me up again. And people look and then they hoist him up. Yeah, I don't, it, I don't know why that happened. I, I don't either. And, and what are you going to do on the rooftop at that point? It's all about like having discipline and what are the needs of the team in, in, in the environment that you're in. Yeah. In this situation, I, I don't think it was necessary. And I don't think it was necessary for those other SWAT team members to get up at that point. But yeah, I would be thinking we got to secure this location and you yeah. don't know what the hell is like, dude, he could have bombs placed somewhere, which his car was, I think, parked fairly closely and they did find explosive devices in the vehicle. But you don't know if he's by himself. He, he could have devices planted somewhere. I mean, you got to lock that area down and it's chaos at that point. But um, I mean, look, th at the end of the day, th this just all falls back on, you know, we, we teach our patrol survival tactics class with Savage Training Group. We're literally going to use this video because there's a chunk of our class where we talk about what stress does to your body in a critical incident type situation. And honestly, like we have a lot of videos that we share in our class. This video is one of the best videos that I've seen that depicts what can go wrong if not adequately trained or mentally prepared to be able, be able to handle a situation like this. And like earlier we were talking, you may be a cop for 30 years, right? In California, you got to put in a full 30 years to get a full retirement, right? Of that 30 years, you might be in one incident where it's a life and death situation. And unfortunately, like you don't, as a cop, get the opportunity to just show up to work every day, hope that it works out for you and go home at the end of the day. Go work at a bank if you want to do that. They don't have to worry about that. We do. And it may only happen one time in your career. Maybe it doesn't happen at all. Maybe it happens several times in your career. The point is, if you are not prepared for that one time, you're going to shit the bed. And that's we as police officers don't get the opportunity to shit the bed because that is why we're there. And people are relying on us to be able to handle and manage a situation like that and do it effectively. Yep. I, and I think my key takeaways from this body cam, because there's a lot to learn from it is all about the planning aspect of it. It's having the mindset of I'm going to this, I'm going to have my rifle staged or actually secured, not just laid in the back of my patrol car. Mm -hmm. I am responding with my partner to a report of someone on a rooftop. My mindset is I'm going to encounter someone and I need to know how to get on that. And if I'm gonna get lifted up, I need to be prepared to encounter that person. Now I'm not saying you need to have your gun out because you don't, we don't, I've never trained to have my gun out of that. But you need to have the mindset. And if you're at a heightened, elevated position in your mind where you encounter that, I don't think you would have a full response like this. Yeah. Based on their demeanor, the, the response was this, basically OODA looped, your mind takes over, get dumped with all this, and then you start doing that. And I think this is a great example of why planning and having your mindset is so important. Yeah. As bad as this is, I mean, it's unfortunate. Um, a lot of good is actually going to come from this because not only are other agencies going to learn from it, I, this, this sheriff's department and local police department are going to dissect this. And yeah. I promise you, they are not going to want to ever let something like this happen again. And they're going to be much more prepared out of it. It's unfortunate that that's how we learn things is from bad events and, and making mistakes. Call it Monday morning quarterbacking, you know, call it whatever you want. Uh, sometimes we get heat for that. That's not what this is. This is a debrief. We're learning from this and everybody watching it should learn from it. And that's, that's all it is. So that's all I have to say on it. Uh, it it's unfortunate. Um, 
I'm sure more and more body cam footage is going to be released on this stuff, but we wanted to highlight uh, the one that's newly been released and, you know, talk about from our perspective as cops, like what happened? You know, the general public, they watch this stuff. They, they don't have a clue. Right. So we're just, we're here to just break that down. So that that's, that's all I got. Yeah. I think my main key takeaway is, is absolutely having the mindset of if you're responding to something, have the mindset, expect to encounter someone. And if you don't, you should be happy that you're not. Yep. So. All right. Well, that's all we got for you guys. We'll, uh, Catch you on the next episode and thank you for tuning in. See you, Mark. Thanks. <laughs>